system that works with some of West Virginia's most vulnerable residents is broken and needs to be fixed. A report detailing the problem was made public this week. West Virginia Tonight reporter Larissa Casillas joins us to explain what the next steps may be. Larissa. Well, Mark, the report has dozens of instances of abuse and neglect in group homes and behavioral health centers that serve intellectually and physically disabled West Virginians. The senators I spoke with today say the report by the Office of Health, Facility Licensure and Certification was basically a cry for additional assistance. In this nine-page report by the Office of Health Facility Licensure and Certification, details about abuse at group homes come to light. Just the first three listed are shocking. A 19-year-old consumed unsecured antifreeze and did not receive outside medical attention for upwards of 12 hours, even after repeatedly telling staff she was not feeling well. A patient was repeatedly sprayed with a water hose outside of his residence and in full view of his neighbors by staff for non-compliance. A patient who was a child was able to obtain the keys to a facility vehicle and died in a fiery crash. The list of grievances goes on, nearly 100 of them. My other feeling was, are we just seeing the tip of the iceberg? Could this be a lot more widespread? Senator Ron Stallings, a doctor in Boone County, says it's the most vulnerable population of West Virginians we're talking about. These uh, folks are special needs kids and special needs people that, uh, that really need that uh, love and, and extra care. Senator Richard Lindsay, a medical malpractice lawyer, also points to cuts in the state health department's budget, approximately $150 million in 2018, and has remained flat since. By the testimony of Director Mara, she doesn't have enough individuals to go around to these homes to make sure that they're providing care and regulated care uh, to all these individuals. In a statement to 13 News, the DHHR wrote, complaints are regularly investigated and when appropriate penalties are assessed. Senator Lindsay says he hopes to tackle this issue in the next legislative session, if not before then, because people can't wait. And a parent of an intellectually disabled uh, child said, my worst fear is that I'm gonna die, not because I fear for my own life, but where my child will go. And both senators say they won't be able to introduce any new legislation until the next session. For now, they can work closely with the DHHR as an oversight committee. In the studio, Larissa Casillas for West Virginia Tonight.